As we end today's show in Burma, where mass protests continue today after at least 18 people were killed in anti-coup protests Sunday, the deadliest day since the February 1st military coup, which deposed and detained de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Police fired live ammunition into the crowds as Burmese forces steadily escalate their crackdown. One local group says a thousand people were arrested Sunday, including journalists and medical professionals. Sunday's bloodshed followed the firing of Burma's ambassador to the United Nations. Nations, uh, Chao Mo Tun, after he denounced the military coup before the UN General Assembly. We need further strongest possible action from the international community to immediately end the military coup, to stop oppressing the innocent people, to return the state power to the people, and to restore the democracy. For more, we go to London, where we're joined by Meng Zarni, Burmese scholar, dissident, human rights activist, co-founder of the Forces of Renewal for Southeast Asia, or FORSI, a grassroots network of pro-democracy scholars and human rights activists across Southeast Asia. Zarni, welcome back to Democracy Now! Describe what happened over the weekend. Well, the coup group and the entire security sector, including uh, the hardcore light infantry divisions uh, and the uh, police force intelligence network have essentially terrorized the entire population. Amy, I think we need to, uh, you know, redefine uh, the, what is happening in Burma as a protest against uh, the military coup, uh, you know, by the new military dictatorship. I've lived under the first military dictatorship for 25 years, and I have seen nothing, you know, despite all the repression that was going on around me and, and the whole society. I have seen absolutely nothing like what is happening. We have a situation where the, um, the military coup group has unleashed unprecedented terror, not simply against people protesting against the coup, but people inside homes, people just, uh, you know, standing by, not getting involved in street protests. So today, um, you know, something unprecedented happened. The elected body called a committee representing people's, uh, uh, sorry, people uh, representing Pidang uh, Zuhluto or the parliament declare the coup group terrorist. I have been pointing this terroristic aspect of the regime, and this committee representing the entire body of elected MPs, not allowed to take their seats in the parliament on the 1st of February, calling this group terrorist. That follow the another unprecedented act uh, at the United uh, Nations General Assembly briefing by the official representative declaring and characterizing the military as the existential threat to the country and the people. We have an extraordinary situation in Burma, not simply clash up between demonstrators and the armed forces. Um, we just also got word that Aung San Suu Kyi, um, the Nobel laureate, uh, appeared in court today. She is one of those who was detained, uh, very much lost a lot of uh, that human rights. Um, uh, the her world-renowned status as a human rights leader because of her um, uh, stance on the Rohingya, standing against the Rohingya. But there she was in court. The significance of this? Well, Amy, I think, you know, Aung San Suu Kyi has remained an iconic and pivotal and uh, indisputably the most, uh, you know, widely popular Burmese politician within the country, within the majority society. I totally, you know, get the contradictions and then to a degree like, you know, uh, you know, hypocritical element, of, you know, to, to, to defend Aung San Suu Kyi when she failed to, you know, defend the um, genocide victims, the Rohingya people. However, I think like what needs to happen, uh, you know, with Aung San Suu Kyi, as well as the uh, uh, the uh, the societies uh, revolting against the entire security sector, the armed forces and uh, police and all the rest, is we need to decouple uh, whatever Aung San Suu Kyi's criminal responsibility uh, coupled with, 
culpability in international law with respect to the genocide against the Rohingya. There, as you know, there is a proceeding going on at the International Court of Justice, uh, the Gambia suing uh, or challenging the state of Myanmar, uh, you know, for violating the terms of the Genocide Convention. We need to decouple Aung San Suu Kyi and her role uh, in the, uh, you know, p uh, the genocide from the people's, you know, popular democratic will on the grounds that, you know, people have the democratic right to pick their own government and to revolt against tyrannical regime, which we have in Burma. And secondly, we need to look at, uh, you know, the, um, the external actors uh, beyond Suu Kyi and domestic politics that are involved in enabling and protecting this regime. The, the public have decided to call terrorist group. And, uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning in UK, I woke up. That's like, you know, 9.30 in the morning. I saw Taliban-like situation, truckloads of, uh, uh, you know, infantry divisions, you know, uh, you know, firing randomly on the empty streets and, you know, people screaming inside their homes. And so th we need to look at uh, the, you know, particularly China's support of this regime and, you know, also look at Singapore's financing and investing. You know, the, the, there are a lot of things that need to be unpacked. Uh, terror financing, China flying flights, carrying what is believed to be special forces into a sovereign country next door. You know, the last uh, uh, the two weeks, I would estimate between five to 10,000 Chinese special forces have been flown in unmarked, uh, you know, on unmarked aircraft carriers from Kuming, the nearest uh, province of China, into Burma, to, you know, uh, in anticipation, perhaps paranoid, on the part of the Burmese government or military, uh, that the U.S. might militarily intervene. These are really, really, uh, you know, relevant, uh, you know, issues in international law. And what do you think the U.S. should do? Well, President Joe Biden, I campaigned for it online, or, uh, you know, because what happens to the United States or in the United States matter uh, around the world, and particularly matter for democratic struggles, uh, you know, particularly Burma and, and, and other places that are unfolding. We have in, 10 in Thailand, seconds, Arnie. Yeah. I think Biden should uh, put his uh, money where his mouth is. He said that democracy need to be uh, defended at the Munich Security Conference uh, t uh, 10 days ago, and Burmese people, millions are out risking their lives, and Biden needs to follow up with action.